Hi, I'm Jason Thompson and I'm here in Edinburgh at the Cabaret Voltaire, which tonight hosts Area 11.
I'm here with Area 11. I think what we, we should do first is, uh, if you guys can introduce yourselves, tell us who you are, what you do in the band, and an interesting factoid about yourself which people might not know and might make it onto the Area 11 wiki at some point. Okay. So who should we start with? Leo goes uh, first. Uh, Kogi goes first. Kogi, okay. Yeah, All right, well, as Leo's kindly said, my name is Kogi, and I play the bass guitar in the band Area 11. And a uh, fact about me, I was born without any empathy. I just don't have that. As <laughs> part of my brain was missing. So, uh, yeah, it makes for an easy ride. It's a good fun. Okay. Yeah, I am joking. I'm <laughs> uh, not joking. Uh, I am Leo. I play drums in the band. And uh, an interesting fact about myself... Um, I'm not very interesting. I have no. You had peanut butter sandwiches one time. I had peanut. Oh, I had peanut butter sandwiches. Tell about that time. So this one time, I had peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> but what I did was I put some jam on the other side, and it was crazy. That's the abridged. Whoa. That's the abridged version. That is the abridged. Story. Like long story. Story. There's a long story short. That's kind the of most scenario, rock and roll but. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, okay, we've got. Uh, hi, I'm Pav. I play guitar in Area 11, and my interesting fact about myself is that I know that Kogi was born with ovaries. <gasps> These things happen. Kogi, is this true? Yeah, but now they're under ease, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least. I'm, I'm Sparkles. I play the singing box and uh, the cheetah phone and the uh, electric zingaling. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, an interesting fact about me is at least two of those instruments I just said aren't fi- yeah, they're fictitious. They're not real. You can't buy them. Um, at least two, possibly. Something all about of them. myself, though. <laughs> I, I don't like that question. Everyone's done funny ones. <laughs> in, do a really dark, serious one. Um, I kill. No. I can't <laughs> right. uh, uh, oh, you're going to have to edit this down. Well, let me just. You let get, me, you give let me approach that again. You are going to edit this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, I'll just put in some really offensive stuff so you have to. Like, um, right, uh, no, you will leave it in. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm Sparkles. I play the guitar sometimes and I do the singing in Area 11. Uh, an interesting piece of trivia about me um, is that I actually used to be a, a Pogs champion. Do you remember Pogs? Oh yeah. I actually used to. I actually entered competitions in around I think it was ninety seven, ninety eight season, um, and we travelled to like Hawaii, which is where they had the the grand finals. Um, but I, I actually I got into the last three, but I got knocked out because... Um, You're cheating, you my, weighted your pugs down. My keeny broke, <laughs> and it was my lucky keeny. Oh, oh wow. The lucky keeny. I used to circle it around the, the pugs before, I, before I'd slam it. Is <laughs> um, that true? Yeah. But I, I literally yeah. don't believe that, but I want it to be true. I would have heard about this, but it's true. I'm of course sorry, it's true. I'm calling yeah, I, 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 bollocks I, on that. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, now we last spoke about a year ago, which was around about when all the lights in the sky uh, hit the uh, the public. Yeah. What has life been like since then? How have people responded to your first album for a start? Well, um, I guess to start with, when it when we released it, it sold a lot more than we thought it was going to sell. So that was very positive. We had a really, um, I guess, positive and overwhelming response from fans and stuff. A lot of fans we didn't know we had. Uh, and similarly, the fan base has really grown since then. Um, we're getting, uh, you know, messages from new people all the time. So they just discovered our music, and they're, you know, going to come to a show now, or whatever. So yeah, it seems to be uh, steadily crescendoing. Um, so yeah, that's no, been fun. That's good. Now you've played Edinburgh tonight, and uh, it was uh, seemed like a great crowd. Is that typical of the uh, audiences that you've been getting on the tour so far? Um, yeah, I think the the three gigs now that we've played so far have all had excellent crowds like they've all been so responsive they've been singing along to pretty much every word which is pretty crazy for us to sort of you know have these like gaps in songs and just have everything like scream back at so us I'm not really doing either. anything like yeah he, that, he, that, just, that, he just does nothing he just sort of stands there now like looking on sort of dance yeah. around but I, I say the Scottish crowd definitely had some of the best energy we've seen so far yeah, um, they, yeah. Were, they were up for it yeah. Yeah, they were much better than the Nottingham and Bristol crowds so <laughs> nah, they were all good in different ways yeah uh, is Bristol that's your home crowd I guess is it kind yeah. of yeah, in some ways Nottingham was though because obviously we, we were from Nottingham we, we, we met in Nottingham and that's where we started the band um and we haven't really, we haven't played that many gigs in Bristol. Like what, like two? That was a, a couple, that was yeah. the second yeah. second gig in Bristol. So like, was. although it was a home crowd in some respects, it also Nottingham kind of felt a bit more. Mm. I, I don't know. Nottingham it, was it, like it's, it's almost like yeah, being not, a band not without a home at the minute. It's like we're not, we you know, we don't. We're but homeless. Having said we're, that, I think this tour has solidified Bristol as a place where, you know, we yeah definitely like because we we had that was definitely probably the best show of the tour so far was Bristol though all in all. Like, I guess everyone but there's yeah quite a lot of people there. Yeah, um, the venue was sold of out. Sold, sold out the venue. It was just a crazy crowd. It was really really good. Yeah. Not to downplay the other shows, but I'd say yeah, Bristol being our, it does feel like home now. I think. I think that kind I of made th- it feel. I like think home. as well because it was the first show, and we weren't really sure sort of what to expect from mm-hmm. the tour, and then that just sort of blew us away with like everything you know, sold out and stuff, and then each gig has been just as good with like the crowd showing up and everything. So. Um, yeah, it was. It's just been pretty crazy, really.
tour just to get out of Bristol, or are you promoting something? What's what's this all about? Is this just your holiday, or what are you doing? We've been touring a long time. Yeah, we just haven't played. A, we wanted to play a few shows. We're currently writing a new EP, so we wanted to test out uh, some of the new material, uh, see how that went down. Um, it's still, you know, in the tweaking stages, so we've still got a fair bit left to do. Um, but yeah, hopefully this will just be like a little warm up for a bigger and longer tour that we're going to do once the EP's out. Uh, hopefully to promote that. And how much work is left to do on the EP? Um, most of the production, but I think most of the writing is done now. We're pretty set on things. So. Yeah. It's taken a long time to write it because we wanted it to be progressive and different and also kind of organic and all those other words that don't really mean anything. <laughs> but what it actually means is that we we just, you know, yeah, we, we wanted to be good. And I think we don't want to just hash out the, yeah. the, the, the stuff we've done before again. We, we don't want to put a time yeah. frame on it and rush something out. Yeah, exactly. It's much and better than we Every time we've tried to do with. that, we just end up getting like really frustrated with the project. It's like, oh, you, we've got to finish it by this date. So I think the new attitude of the band is definitely to let it happen naturally and enjoy it. Like, don't try and rush it out. You know, the only deadlines yeah. we're setting are our own because you know we don't have a record label and we don't have any sort of external pressures. It's just us for pressuring ourselves to to do that. So we may as well just you know just have a good time and not get complacent. But definitely to enjoy the process and not, not, not trying to stress us out by going, we need a record by summer or whatever. So. record label um, everything you do I guess is self-financed or do you do crowdfunding how do you uh, keep the area 11 machine going sales 
the sales. online sales. Um, yeah, every time someone comes to a show or buys a t-shirt, a show buys a t-shirt from our, our online store or purchases from iTunes, we get a cut of that, and that's what keeps us going at the moment. And it, and, it, and at the minute, it is. It's doing. Yeah. Like, you know, we're, manage, we're managing to to be sort of self-sufficient. You know, we're not turning a huge profit, but we're definitely. Enough to, uh, enough to get enough a swanky van. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a swanky van and a, and and a, and a, a very handsome driver. driver. Yeah. <laughs> Wood van. <laughs> ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Big van, actually. Uh, so, um, when we last spoke, you talked about how your music uh, was inspired by anime, and I know that earlier in the year, you, uh, some of you at least, were involved with a soundtrack for some anime. Uh, any more of that in the pipeline, and uh, how was that received? Sparks, you uh, wrote Sparks, the track. You were, you were the, yeah. For, yeah, I wrote the song. It was, it was. Um, I was commissioned to, to to write a couple of songs for for an anime series, and I got the band involved with one of them. Um, and yeah, I, I wrote the thing, um, and brought the guys in to record it. And we didn't sing it. I didn't write the lyrics. I wrote the melody, but then a Japanese singer came in to do that. So that was really fun. Whether we've got more stuff like that, I mean, definitely. But I, honestly, it's not something that's a huge priority for me right now. I think. Mm. Currently, our priority is just gigging, touring, which are the same thing, and releasing more records. Because that's that's what we got to do as a band, and that's what we that's what we enjoy about it. Absolutely, definitely playing the shows. Mm. Here we go.
You mentioned there a Japanese singer. Now, one of my favourite songs of yours is Shino Barado, and you released a Japanese version of that. Well, how did that come about, and do you have any more plans to, to bring Japanese versions of some of your other songs out? Uh, well, in terms of Japanese versions, we do sometimes play um, a couple of covers from Japanese bands we like, because uh, we draw a lot of influence from their style of music. Not necessarily just you know lyrics and stuff, but also the way they play their guitars, play their instruments. Uh, so one of our favorites to cover is a song called Haruka Kanata, uh, which is a really fun track to play. Um, but the Japanese version, I think... Didn't you translate that, or you got someone to translate that? Becky it? translated it, the girl who sang on it with, with us, and she, she just did a translation of it. Um, uh, I think it was just for like, cause she she has Japanese like lessons, evening like, like not a night course that she's Japanese. Uh, she she did it as an assignment because it was like she could get some credit for it or something, just translate this thing. So she just sent me over and yeah, I thought I thought it'd be kind of funny to record it. It didn't take very long, but I did I didn't really know how to pronounce any of it. So she was just sort of telling me how to pronounce it, and we thought it'd be quite cool to do it for the Shino release, and it just gives it another element, like another sort of alternative mix that's interesting. Yeah, so it was good fun to make. Have, have we ever done it Japanese live? I don't think we have. Uh, I think, I think, you, I, I you think switched I did it a little bit. We did like a verse or so two. Yeah, I maybe. thought you were just Drop sort of having some. a moment or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only found out it was Japanese afterwards. <laughs>
more date left on the tour. You're down in London in a couple of days, and uh, you'll be travelling south again. I saw you pop up on Facebook this morning, uh, bothering the Angel of the North. <laughs> um, now that's uh. that's near Washington, which has districts which have all got numbers instead of names. So it's very likely that there's an Area 11 in Washington. Oh, nice. Did you realise that? No, they didn't. No, we didn't. No. Like immediately when you were talking about numbers, I was just thinking of the film District Nine, <laughs> as opposed to an Area 11. But. <laughs> Um, oh, Leo was Leo was somewhere. Oh, was somewhere else. Yeah. I was somewhere else. I was thinking about that film District Nine. Yeah, Sorry. no interview. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've seen more rats, right? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Oh, oh. Clerks too. You seen that one? Uh, we started watching it, but we yeah. never, got, never got through. Doesn't quite. Oh, bit shit. Um, <laughs> we knew there was a, an Area Eleven in uh, Mexico. No, it's like I, it's like Nigeria, I think. Because if you search on Twitter for just Area Eleven, which I do. You know, I'm vague. No, no, there was an Area 11 in Mexico. There was a band. That oh, was it. oh, yeah, there was. There no. was. There was a previous one. I don't think they're around anymore, though. I hope not. Good. Yeah, we we, we dealt with them. Yeah, we sorted them out. <laughs> sorted wow. Them out good. They had a, an accident. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, I was gonna actually say about this place, called Area 11. We kind of ruined that entire thing, and now it makes us seem the, like the moment's gone, man. The moment's okay. gone. We've done a new song. <laughs> We did another one. Um, it's going to be on, XD, on our XD2. Code USD is going to be called Tonight. <laughs> the tale of uh, Hamish McGregor and his trip to the shops. <laughs> no, no, that will be the final take. Oh, I'm going to set that because uh, cause we've said it live now. Uh, so, this is the first track from that EP. Uh, it's called Are You Listening? Because there's.
subject, uh, Sparkles, your name, uh, when written down, it's impossible uh, to ignore the fact that there's an asterisk uh, in your name, which gives it a slightly magical look, if, if I, I might say. Uh, is that the intention? What's it, the point of it's the... It's going to lead to a footnote. <gasps> there will be a footnote? Yeah, it'll be on my grave. So. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> uh, God, well, it's the most long-winded plan. We've got to wait for that to move it on. Sparkles. <laughs> oh, it is. I've literally like... already thought about it. That's, that, that, is, that is literally what it's going to be. Like, there's no other... Can it be asterisk and then the word asterisk? <laughs> Because that's what it should be. Spoiled one of the potentials, and now it's on the interview. That's obviously the one I, I can't go with. That. Oh man, oh, you it's... ruined it. Well, oh, no. My God. <laughs>
Um, okay, so just uh, just as a sort of a, an almost final point, what are you guys listening to at the moment? What's on your uh, your iPods? What you're downloading? What is influencing and exciting you musically at the moment? Uh, recently, I've been listening to, upon recommendation from a friend, the new War on Drugs album, which uh, is really really very pleasant. Kind of a Springsteen-y meets um, kind of Tame Impala. A lot of a lot of artists I like. Um, Lots of different things, really. Getting back into Manic Street Preachers after I sort of had phases with them and you know, rediscovering, yeah, rediscovering, I'd say, the Beatles, you know, every now and then, sort of return to them every couple of years and have a bit of a phase and in and out. It was a little bit Beatlesy tonight, actually, wasn't oh, really? it? it was, well, it was a bit like the cavern, wasn't it? In yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah, mm. It was that vibe, certainly. Absolutely. Uh, Parvis, what are you stuff. listening to? Um, recently, I've been listening to a lot of uh, instrumental music. I've been listening to a lot of. Um, uh, there's a guitar artist I like called Pliny. I think he's French. Um, he's a solo guy. Look him up on YouTube and stuff. He's got some really cool videos and stuff. He just put out a new single. I've been mean, getting into that and some Sithuay as well. Some um, I can't pronounce his name very well, but it's David Masik McKick. I think it is. He's a, a Czechoslovakian um, a guy as well. Runs a band called Destiny Potato as well. They came over recently. <laughs> That's uh, how you've been Destiny saying it. Potato. What? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they, 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 they were meant to come over for UK Tech Fest this year, but they unfortunately cancelled, which is a bit disappointing. But um, they got a shout out from the Bank of Sixth and stuff. It's really cool. But them as well. They're, they've just released an album, which is excellent as well. Um, I guess I've been listening to sort of lots of uh, more hardcore stuff. I've been getting back into Million Dead and. Um, I've been listening to the latest La Dispute album as well, which is probably one of my favourites of this year. I've just had it on repeat consistently, and um, uh, balance and composure and stuff. Sort of more. I I've gone for I guess more modern things. Whereas Kogi's going back in time a hey, little bit. The Beatles are going to be big. I keep telling you. Yeah, <laughs> there's this new band. Don't want to mention. But yeah, I, I'm just sort of getting back into my hardcore music really, which is hopefully going to. Uh, influence my drumming somewhat on the new record if I can play that well <laughs> um, I've been listening to a lot of Foxes um, her album's great um, I thought that was really good um, I've been listening to uh, Let Live's first album which I dismissed at the time as being inadequate but it's actually it's actually alright the new great. Manix record just dropped so that's alright I have a few been listening to that I also went back and listened to um uh, 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 Generation Terrorist a lot more. Like I, I, I like it, and uh, but I've never really like loved it that much. It's so uh, good. So man. I went back and I've been, I've been getting big back into that and it's actually so noticing good. the intricacies of it, um, which I didn't think there were many. But it's actually a very good album. Um, Electronic drums, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to think of who else I've really been listening to. That's about it. Like, Lana Del Rey. Oh, I have time actually, I've gone I have in, actually been listening, been listening to, to a lot of Lana Del Rey, and I've not really. I've only just. I'm quite late to the party there. Um, some of it works. It's like it's kind of like 50% of it works, and 50% of it doesn't. And the 50% that works works very well, and the 50% that doesn't, it just sucks and it's awful. And it makes you want to cry it because it's so bad. But the 50% that works is incredible, and really moving. So, like, so hit and miss with her stuff. But I guess she wants to polarize, so. <laughs> and she does. So that's quite an interesting mix because you're doing like pop, you're doing like classic rock we're doing like metal and Weird instrumental shit. and I'm doing like hardcore this EP is going to be strange something for everyone absolutely yeah. <laughs> Bye. 
finally um, what uh, you're working on the new EP obviously anything else in the pipeline over the next 12 months that you're allowed to tell us about any hopes and dreams for the band wristbands all right. Yeah, we're gonna get some <laughs> some wristband style things. Just so Leo can wear one. Yeah, yeah. I phone need cases. to add to my collection. Phone cases. Absolutely. We don't have, I need a new phone case. Mm. For my phone. Phone case. <laughs> both both me and Paul don't have phone cases on our phones. Uh, like, it's yeah. pretty. Yeah, it's it's that's that's right. life on the edge, you know. That's when um, you. Yeah. Well, so it's all all about the merch. We <laughs> 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 need some tight. No, it's just it's just for ourselves. It's just for ourselves. We talk about unbranded things. No, this is just this is just just stuff we need. Some much tighter jeans. Yeah, absolutely. Look how loose his jeans are. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah. In terms of the band, so definitely more shows, more more music, and do some some rock all and roll. Towers. We all, go towers. all towers. Do some fighting. <laughs> fighting. Do some. Yeah, fight. uh, my new thing is getting people to suck my toes. I mean, I don't know if I can say that. But like, <laughs> it's a brand new thing. So more of that if I can get that. Oh, it's okay. so wonderful. Uh, and where do people write if they want to? Uh, his toes. Oh, just turn up at the house. <laughs> okay. My toes are my shoes are open twenty four seven. Okay, so I'm, I'm guessing uh, a lot of the people who'll hear this will know all of the ways in which they can keep up with what you're doing. But for those who don't, where do people find you online? Uh, oh, sorry, you got finish, right. finish what you're saying. Yeah, where do people find you online? And uh, you know, how do we keep up with your exploits? It's area dash eleven uk. All the links are there. It's nice big old social media banners. Big old thing on the side and yeah standard facey b twitter t no, that's twitter twitter, uh, twi- all the things, twitter. instagram we got a soundcloud we got the band camp we got morse code we, we got, got all of morse it. code we got an email address info at area dash level carrier pigeon carrier pigeon carrier smoke pigeon. signals everything it's all good i just yeah. signed up a a, a grinder account where <laughs> we've got a <laughs> <laughs> and there's a whole lot of stuff on youtube as well isn't there oh yeah youtube as well that's oh, a yeah, YouTube, yeah. youtube youtube's yeah yeah we're gonna keep so we Speaking of YouTube, actually, there's a, there's a clip I saw recently, Kogi, of, of you behaving very rock and roll on a dating show. On a date? Oh, right. That was oh, a that's show. a classic. Oh, here we go. It's got that is a classic. classic. That's that a, uh, back, a classic. back from my salad day at the university. Me and uh, a good friend of mine, Nicholas Gilbert, um, went to terrorize this dating show that these people put on around campus. And we were just acting like horrible bastards. I told you. <laughs> No empathy. I don't have it. I do. Yeah, I do what I want. Um, yeah, we got kicked off. Made a girl cry. You know. You ate a flower. I ate a flower. Ate a flower. A flower. It, was a, it was a flower. successful day. It was. It was, it was totally rock and roll. Yeah. It's yeah. the most Absolutely. rock and roll thing any of us have ever done. Uh, did you see me fall down the stairs onto Parv's amp? That was pretty rock that was and roll. Pretty rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I cried for like 20 minutes. It's yeah. pretty fucking. Well, sorry. It's <laughs> super, I'm buying uh, the mixed nuts one. He's a crosser. Okay. Hey, thanks ever so much. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having Take care of yourselves. I hope London goes well, and uh, we'll catch the EP. Speak to you again when the EP's out for sure. Fantastic. Thank you very much. much. Thank you. It's our last song. Very tumbled, but I'm just going to see what happens. Coming up, this song is called "The Lights in the Sky." Thank you so much for coming. I'm sure we'll be back here. Hopefully, quite soon.
Thank you so much for coming down. You guys have been fucking amazing. Thank you. Thanks to the A's for supporting us as well. Those guys were great. We'll be around after the show in like 10 minutes or something to hang out. I wonder how long Park can play this before. I guess we're tired. Do it again. Sure.